uh, talk about the issue further. Mustafa is a Turkish Muslim writer and columnist based in Istanbul. He graduated from the International Relations Department of the Bosphorus University. He had his master thesis on the Kurdish question at the History Department of the same university. He has given seminars in many universities in uh, the USA and also in the United Kingdom on issues relating to Islam and modernity. Since 2002, he has been working as a columnist and editor in, Turkish, in the Turkish press and has been writing opinion pieces for Turkish daily newspapers such as Reference, Radical and Zaman. He is currently the opinion editor and a columnist for Turkish daily news. His articles have also appeared on publications like the Washington Post, International Herald Tribune, the Washington Times and Islam Online, and also, uh, most importantly, on his website, thewhitepath.com. Uh, Mustafa Akiol has a book in Turkish titled Rethinking the Turkish Question, What Went Wrong, What Next, which received praise from many prominent Turkish intellectuals. He is currently working on a book in English on the future of Islam and the Islamic world. Now, about this seminar today, uh, we will divide the sessions uh, today into three, uh, as you can see up there. We are running slightly behind time. The first will focus on general update on what is happening in modern day Turkey. The second on the issue of political freedom. And the final one on economic freedom. In each session, Mustafa will speak for about 30 to 35 minutes. And this will be followed by around 10 to 15 minutes question and answer. We aim to finish by about half one so that you have time to pray Zuhur. I think Asar is about 2.15 today. And we have a hall upstairs, I believe, uh, for prayers. Now, housekeeping, there's no fire alarm schedule for today, so if the fire bell goes, we should calmly make our way out of the building. Uh, I'm sure everyone has signed in uh, on the way into the hall, and there's also a feedback form. You will see on, on your seats, there's a form, a feedback form, which I hope you will fill in uh, at the end of, of uh, the seminar. Now, uh, without further ado, Mustafa. Good morning and assalamu alaikum to everybody. Uh, thanks for being here in this uh, like very early morning, which is early for me, but because I'm still have this jet lag. Uh, and thanks so much for Van and everybody at the Malaysian Think Tank and everybody who made this you know speech and my visit to Ireland possible. It's my first time to Ireland, uh, and I'm very glad to be here. And it's my first time that I'm speaking with Malaysian, you know, friends. Uh, I mean, I've, I had I know Malaysians, but this is the first time that we engage in a discussion and, uh, you know, a brainstorming about what Islam is and how we should understand Islam in the 21st century. And I think Turkey and Malaysia, okay. And I think Turkey and Malaysia are both unique cases uh, they are unique experiments in the history, in the history of the Islamic civilization. Uh, Turkey has its you know, own Ottoman roots. It used to be the center of the caliphate, but now it's been also part of the modern Western world for a long time. And how Turkey uh, synthesizes and how Turkey come to term, comes to terms with that, with its own identity and some of the modern ideas it is facing, is a good, I think, experiment. And Malaysia has its own history, of course, you know much better. And I would like to learn more from you in the Q&A sessions on how you perceive Turkey, how you perceive the ideas we'll discuss here. So I don't want to be just imposing ideas. I want to get a lot of feedback from you as much as I can. Um, so, well, the first issue, the first session is titled Introduction to the Turkish Scenario. And uh, I think there are interesting things going on in Turkey for quite some time. Today, with, while we were walking with Van to here, and I, was, I asked, what is the situation in Malaysia about political ideas? And I kind of learned that the term liberalism, for example, has been a very loaded term in Malaysia because who, some people who claim to be liberals do not recognize the right of, for example, a woman to wear a hijab or they don't recognize people's rights to fully practice Islam, for, for example. That's what I've learned about Malaysia, which is surprising to me because in Turkey, the term liberal and the, the people who call themselves liberals are basically who defend the rights of Muslims to wear the hijab or to practice their faith. And they are against the states, for example, persecution. 
Uh, actually, in Turkey now, people are speaking about an alliance between uh, practicing Muslims and the secular liberals who are on the same side against a very aggressive and intolerant secularist mentality, which is, you know, very much related to the official ideology of Turkey. So in Turkey, uh, there's a whole different thing, which I think shows us that uh, terms have my different meanings. When I say freedom, when I say liberty, when I say liberalism, it might mean, it might mean something to me because I, I have this kind of political uh, vision and because I, I'm in that political context, but it might mean something else for other people because the, 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 the idea of liberty they're faced with, the idea of liberty that is proposed to them is different. So, uh, so I'll try to explain how Turkey you know, came to this point and what is right now happening in Turkey and how, what kind of lessons we can draw from the Turkish experience in terms of political ideas and how Islam, what kind of political ideas should Islam, should Muslims you know, have in this age. Um, before going into that, if you want, let me give you a brief overview of the current situation in Turkey, what's going on. And when, a lot of people speak about the AKP, uh, AKP, AK Party, as we call it in Turkish, which has a double name. AK means in Turkish white, so it means white party in some sense. My surname is AK too, but it's just a you know, coincidence. Uh, but hence the name of my website, The White Path, comes from that. But AK also are the, you know, the synonyms of, the, the first letters of uh, justice and development. So it's Justice and Development Party. But as you well know, the party uh, is founded and led by people with uh, very strong Islamic identities. Our prime minister, for example, Tayyip Erdogan. He's a Muslim who prays five times a day. His, wa his wife wears the hijab, the headscarf. Our president, Abdullah Gül, similarly, he's a very devout man. His wife wears a headscarf. Most people in the AKP are like that. There are some secular individuals, too. I mean, there are some people in AKP who would drink wine and you know, be, don't follow any Islamic practice, uh, but they would be respectful to it. So that's a distinction in, in Turkey, which is now, now arising. Uh, and right now, AKP is the most ardent supporter of Turkey's accession into the European Union. Uh, whereas some of the secularists uh, who, ha who call themselves modernizers for more than a century have become anti-EU. They're against the EU process because they think that the EU process is diminishing the power of Turkish military, diminishing the power of state institutions, uh, and diminishing the authoritarian nature of our regime. Uh, which is for them a good thing. I mean, this, the more authoritarian the regime is, the, the better for them. Uh, but people uh, who vote for AKP, and these might be you know, very conservative, practicing Muslims, or they might be liberals, uh, they prefer the European Union process because they think that... Okay, thank you. Is that for me? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Let me get it. Okay. Thanks so much. Uh, because they think that... Uh, the, the EU process and no nothing thanks the EU process and all the liberal reforms that the EU process necessitates just gives more and more freedom to everybody including the Muslims and uh, of course in Turkey everybody basically is nominally Muslim I mean it's, a, it's well we have non-Muslim minorities very few we have very like 20,000 Jews uh, about 100,000 Christians, Armenian, Greek, and you know, Protestant. But generally, the, the Turkish society is defined as predominantly Muslim, like 99%. So it's not like even in Malaysia. I think in Malaysia, you have a big Chinese population and other uh, non-Muslim communities. Uh, in Turkey, like everybody, basically, 99% uh, of the population is defined as Muslim. But uh, of course, n not all of these people are practicing Muslims. So the people who would like, you know, pray regularly and who would be careful about what they eat, you know, dietary laws and wear the hijab, that would not be the majority of the population. That would defend, that, that would change about 30, 40%. And maybe the people who are really very Islamic would maybe just 10 to 